cells that were separated from each other and reporting plants. electrical activity. Yeah, in, in plants. Yeah, plants well, in, 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 in human cells, too. Yeah, ah. Oh. See, so the, bo the bottom line is the belief that we just came into the environment and we are separate from the environment, uh, that's like the biblical thing, like God put all these things in here and are separate little <laughs> from each other. Uh, it turns out to be, this is totally incorrect, all living organisms continuously adjust their genetics to the to, to their perception of the environment. And why that's important for us and the listening audience most importantly here is, yes, we come with a set of genes, and in fact, we most of us, 95% or more, came with a completely healthy set that allows us to survive adequately well. And then during our lifetime, we change our genes. And we like to always blame it on, you know, like, uh, well, the toxins or something like that, but it also turns out this that our genes will adapt our body to fit what we perceive or believe about the environment. Okay, because, boy, that has immense implications, doesn't it? It's okay, not well, just what's in the environment, it's what we perceive in the environment, ah, which begins the, to explain the placebo effect, another yeah. kind of phantom effects. How you perceive what you think, your consciousness state, has as profound of effect as the physical state. Absolutely. This, it sort of unites. The, the uniting of this new information, My what body. it unites is this. It unites conventional allopathic medicine when it understands the new mechanisms that genes work by, not the, the uh -huh. belief that's taught right now. It will unite conventional medicine, alternative or complementary medicine, and spiritual healing having all the same basic understanding that the genetic expression, the health, the behavior, the physiology of an organism, be it uh, a, a snail or a human, is based on the interaction of that organism with its environment. It also means, Bruce, that here's just one more arena in which mind over matter and the role of consciousness is clearly filtering in through our understanding and rippling across the board. Absolutely. It's not just quantum physics where it happens over here in this little sector. It's our daily life that this is going on. This is that's the beautiful part. This is this is what's happening. We're we're entering into the new millennium, and there's this convergence. Uh, of of new awareness and the human genome project while well, everyone was going you know all the hoopla and the parties that they actually found the code and and were able to do it which was just technology it wasn't real science but Watson and Crick's DNA uh, discovery in 1953 far surpasses anything the human genome project is in regard to science but the bottom line was this that the scientific results although everybody talks about the fact that we did it the results were the joke we expected, according to how we think conventional thought, how the mechanism works is that the genes control everything, and then end up finding there's not enough genes to be involved with that process, which means, ah, your fundamental thought was wrong. Well, also that we don't need to go through the decoding of the whole human genome and then go in there and tinker with it on that level. We can. Because we are altering and transforming our genes in this interactive two-way street as we speak. We're already doing that. We're doing that right now, and that all of a sudden takes back to the ancient philosophy. I mean, the, the, the history of the world, I've said, uh, even to the time of Christ, uh, that belief is what the whole thing is about. That's what, he was, that's what his whole message totally revolved around, was that your status on this planet as a human, your health, your relationships, and everything he said was a matter of belief, and that he said, ye of little belief that, you know, you don't recognize, you, you have the power to do everything I can do, transform yourself and transform life, if you recognize the power of your belief over the expression of genes. So the spiritual wisdom traditions had it all along. One question from our chat room, a couple of questions, let's get to the first one. So how can we positively influence our genes? The, the belief change, and, and it's very, it's very. There's some new uh, power technologies for belief change that uh, everyone used to think, you know, like uh, if we have old beliefs that for years and years they're going to take a long time to undo. This is not true. That uh, beliefs can can be reprogrammed because it's a genetic program. It's a machine, mm -hmm. and the beliefs are programming, and the beliefs can be changed instantly. I recommend that people uh, tune into this website. I'll just give the website, and it'll be easier to get to the sure. information. You can even test your core beliefs and how they're affecting you. Oh, fun! The website is www. Psych, like psychology, T S Y C H hyphen K, psych 
hyphenk.com. And if they go to that, they can see that belief changing, that was our old, our old idea, an old idea that, that we had to go down and find the source of what the problem is. And, and the reality is, no, uh, you can get to a belief change and change your, your genes essentially through this belief change in minutes. How we'll just check that, that website. We'll do. How does that work? And we'll invite that gentleman to Rob Williams. Explain Rob that. Williams, and it's called Psyche, and I've worked with him for 10 years, and it always, because I've changed my beliefs, and we talked about this before, but I did it the old hard way, and it was a lot of work. And once I saw Rob do this, I was, I, I've seen it for, let's see, the first time about 10 years ago, and the first person I saw him work on, in a matter he did, like 12 or 15 minutes, changed her belief, and I know this person today, 12 years later, she, her whole life completely changed from that 12 minutes. Well, what does this have to say that our beliefs in and of themselves can be manipulated from the outside? I mean, that's kind of threatening. What if somebody it, it, well, it's comes in to program us? It is threatening. It is. It is. This, our beliefs are always being uh, uh, changed from the outside. What we read in the paper changes our beliefs. If we begin to fear things, we will then put. We will actually change our physiology. You can feel the change of physiology mm -hmm. when you when you get a fear response. You change your blood flow. You change your circulation. You shut down the brain in certain regions, shut down the immune system and these fear responses, and that's only because we believe something. So and go to the go to a scary movie or just read the newspaper headlines. Well, scary movies are, you know, there, there's a certain amount of excitement that, that, doesn't, that doesn't hurt us because we know we're, we're in the movie, but if you had to do it in real life, it, it would have a whole different physiological effect. <laughs> but but that, this is the truth, and this is what your show has been talking about all the time that we have been cultured and cultivated and shaped into uh, the world that we are because our beliefs have been manipulated, uh, not not because it was like conspirators. The people were manipulating because they honestly believed what they were doing were right. The, the things we've learned, the truths we've held may not be right. And, and your show is, is consistently tried to say, say that, you know, those things that we, that we believe is hard fact are not necessarily hard fact. Right, let's examine everything that we think we know from the inside out and take a fresh look at it and demiss the the falsities out there. Let's re-examine it. Those that will that are true will stand up to our scrutiny. It's quite Absolutely, an and it's a time for it was back years ago. There was that old phrase they threw it out: question authority. And guess what? Boy, is there a time to say that? It's to, it's now. We have to do that now because it's just prime. That, the, the, that new beliefs are fundamental because our conventional understanding, especially in regard to being victims of our genes and genetic automatons, that whole belief system is going out the window. The, the, the genome results reveal that there's a lot more to it than the genes. It's, uh, it's a very exciting process, isn't it, to um, kind of examine your belief systems, examine all that you think you know, it's quite thrilling, threatening, exciting. Well, that's what, that kind of keeps us alive, <laughs> you can you know? yourself. I think, well, but I think it's very necessary if we're going to get out, out outside the box. Otherwise, we just keep spinning our wheels and we keep repeating the same history that has been lived before us. You know, it's like time for a new story. It's time for a new adventure. It's time to wake up and break out of the old paradigm. So this is part of that process. It seems to me that there's a this very process is built into us, and we can't help ourselves but to re-examine this. Look at the various shifts through history. Look at the various overturned paradigms that, that lay in our wake throughout our history. This well, is our no recorded good, you know, history. They were good at the time, even. And, and then there's a period where beliefs, if they don't change and accommodate evolution, then, then the beliefs become stale and rigid and outdated. And when that happens, Ultimately, a new population buys, the, uh, you know, a new belief, and the old population is gone, and the old belief is gone. And so, w w you know, Darwinian biology, as much as I'm it, because of what it really means, was absolutely necessary for us to make the steps that we made to get to the point we're at today. But now we must discard beliefs because we must recognize uh, uh, we, we were wrong. There was okay. something wrong in there. Two points. There's a question about Darwin, which I'll get to in a moment from our chat room. But first, I wanted to ask you. Given that analogy, that function, this interaction between environment and cell and between an environment and the evolution of a organism, do you believe also that our belief systems are just adapting to our current state of affairs, that when we construct what we know as this in a 21st century living, that our belief systems, um, that they, they change in order to accommodate 
the next step. Maybe our, maybe our, all of it's a falsehood, this series of falsehoods. I don't know if there's any absolute truth out there, but it seems to me that that we go through these paradigm shifts and we live at a new set of belief systems, paradigms, in order to accommodate where we are now. It's just a, a series, it's one point, a snapshot in the whole evolutionary series strung together. So why should I believe this next, this current one or the next one any more than I would believe a past one? Well, it's just the, useful. It's just a useful set of beliefs. But, you know, it doesn't mean we're still not fooling ourselves to a very large degree. I don't know. I think that what science spins out is just the newest series of myths, like the old creation myths and the old myths of old. Science is just spinning out a new set of them. I don't well, know. I, I think that that is very, very true, but the whole process is every time we do that, we find out some little new piece, and the whole idea is, is to keep adding the new pieces and not stopping on the one piece you're at, which is generally what happens when we get into trouble. And, yeah, there's an evolution, and, and it's really, this is, but the, in our history, this is something, a new point in our history at this moment for this process of evolution. And the reason is this. We went from a world that believed in everything being totally spiritual, that every that you know that forces out of our control were involved with shaping the world. That was a long time ago, and through the process, we started to go into a material world, and then started to look at the world that it's just a machine, and that there's nothing else other than the machine parts. And we pushed it now to the end, and this is what the Genome Project finally revealed: there's more to it than just the machine. And the point is now we've covered both spectrums: the spiritual spectrum and the material spectrum. Let's and come back to balance somewhere in the middle and yeah, include both it. points that's of view. Yeah. We will come right we go back to him with your questions. And this next one from the chat room from Blue Max, he says, What does this say about the validity of Darwin's ideas, or at least what we popularly hold to be his theory of evolution? Is the theory dead on arrival now? I would I would agree that some mechanism of Darwin's works, but it doesn't explain all of the process of evolution. And I think you're putting on the table some about those missing pieces, Bruce. Um, but what about the theory in and of itself? Uh, in and of itself, it's a minor uh, it's a minor contribution to what evolution is all about. Yeah. And as you said, it is involved. Remember I mentioned the fact that you can have five different, uh, you know, five bacterial cultures and put them mm -hmm. in five environments and they ultimately will come out to be the same? Yep. Uh, there are mutations involved. And although the end results are all the same, what they found out was that it could mutate it in various ways to get the same end result. So that this is this is there's a two part process to this evolution. That the end was already determined, but it may take a little bit of a random course to get to that end. So here's well, the point. Mm -hmm. Darwinian biology only emphasizes the random and mm -hmm. therefore misses out on the main point of evolution. That the ends are right. already predetermined. And so it's not the, the conclusions are not random, but the the mutation steps as they occur might be random. Yet the ends are predetermined. So it's Lamarckian evolution because this is what Lamarck said. What did Lamarck say? That he said that organisms in the environment have a purposeful interaction. Mm -hmm. That the organism, its expression and and its biology is a is a complement to the environment that it finds itself in. I mean, at the mm -hmm. time it was very obvious. It's like. Uh, fish are, are in the ocean. They're not in the Gobi Desert, you know, and orchids are, are in the tropics and not in mm -hmm. Antarctica. The reason is this. Well, each organism is precisely matched to conform to the environment. So Lamarck looked at that when he put the theory of evolution together 50 years before Darwin and more accurately than Darwin put it together and said, to understand life, it's really to understand the community and not to look at the individual. So the mistakes that the theory of evolution have made is to say uh, we can recognize that the ear of the elephant uh, works, but they mistake the ear of the elephant for the entire beast. Well, they're, they're just As focused, an analogy. But, yeah, it's, they're just focused. They focus on the individual survival of the fittest, when in truth it's it's the community that we have to focus on, and and why and also this, the conventional Darwinian thought that evolution was a random process, and mm -hmm. we got here through total genetic accident, is completely wrong in that regard, that organisms are not, that, mm -hmm. that we got here was not a genetic accident, that you could probably start it all over again, and it would still come out the same as it did the first time. Okay, but random mutation happens, but it's not the whole mechanism driving evolution. There are other factors involved, and so they were blinded by the one factor yes. and missed the rest of it. Um, the uniting of this new information, what it unites is this. 
unites conventional allopathic medicine when it understands the new mechanisms that genes work by, not the, the uh -huh. belief that's taught right now. It will unite conventional medicine, alternative or complementary medicine, and spiritual healing, having all the same basic understanding that the genetic expression, the health, the behavior, the physiology of an organism, be it uh, a, a snail or a human, is based on the interaction of that organism with its environment. It also means, Bruce, that here's just one more arena in which mind over matter and the role of consciousness is clearly filtering in through our understanding and rippling across the board. Absolutely. It's not just quantum physics where it happens over here in this little sector. It's our daily life that this is going on. This is that's the beautiful part. This is this is what's happening cells that were separated from each other and reporting electrical activity. Yeah, in, in plants. Yeah, in plants well, in, in, in human cells too. Yeah. Ah. Oh. See, so the bo the bottom line is the belief that we just came into the environment and we are separate from the environment. Uh, that's like the biblical thing that like God put all these things in here and a separate little <laughs> from each other. Uh, it turns out to be this is totally incorrect. All living organisms continuously adjust their genetics that our genes will adapt our body to fit what we perceive or believe about the environment. Okay, because, boy, that has immense implications, doesn't it? It's not just well, what's in the environment, it's what we perceive in the environment, ah, which begins the, to explain the placebo effect, another yeah. kind of phantom effects. How you perceive what you think, your consciousness state, has as profound of effect as the physical state. Absolutely. This it sort of unites to their, to, to their perception of the environment. And why that's important for us and the listening audience most importantly here is, yes, we come with a set of genes, and in fact, we most of us, 95% or more, came with a completely healthy set that allows us to survive adequately well. And then during our lifetime, we change our genes. And we like to always blame it on, you know, like, uh, well, the toxins or something like that, but it also turns out this.